Hi, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany. And today I have George T. Stagg, 2013, 64.1% ABV. This is 15 months, 15 years old and 11 months. So the whiskey base number, if you'd like to look it up, is 45517. Over here in Germany, I can buy this bottle, um, the big one, for $700, which means uh, that this actually costs 20 euros, about 22 to 25 bucks for the two CLs I have here in the hand. So this is part of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, BTAC, and George T. Stagg belongs to this collection since 2002. We have wa William Laurel Weller was originally in a 90 proof version 2000 and 2005. They changed it to a cast strength barrel proof. Eagle Rare 17, one of my most favorite bourbons of the entire universe, um, has been there since 2000. Zazerac 18 has been there since 2000. Interesting story with the Zazerac 18. Actually, they filled up all the barrels they had from Zazerac 18 way back then, put those into steel um, containers, and then they've been using those, or they used those until 2015 for that annual Buffalo Trace Antique Collection release. Since 2015, they've actually had enough new juice um, to... Supply this um, BTAC. And there's a Thomas H. Hardy Zazerac since 2006, also part of the BTAC. So, um, this actually, the 2013 um, version of George T. Stagg was nominated or was awarded as the world's best North American whiskey. All of the George T. Stags are comprised or are made of um, Kentucky corn, number one and number two, Minnesota rye, and North Dakota malted barley. Always made with the sour mash process. And there's sheets online. Type in um, George T. Stag 2013 PDF, and you'll actually see the nice little letter every owner of the bottle gets. And you'll see that it was um, bottled, um, sorry, Distilled 1997, bottled 2013. It was the warehouses I, K, and Q. And you'll see they actually had to have 157 barrels for this batch. Now, this batch, as all batches of George T. Stag, leaves the still at 67.5%, goes in the barrels at 62.5%, and then due to evaporation and the angel share, there's a change in the ABV. So this actually goes up from 62.5 all the way up to 64.7%. Now, that part that's gone is called the angel share. Buffalo Trace just calls it evaporation. Now, this has a very special number. If I take a look at the evaporation level here of um, the 2009 barrels I'm going to have, I have to actually look at my sheets. I'm sorry, I didn't have that in my head at the moment. We had um, 2009, 49.8%. We had, um, which is a lot. 2011, we had 57.8%, which is also not bad, which means in those 15, 16, 17 years, about half of everything in that barrel has disappeared. This 2013 release, 73.34% evaporated, disappeared from the barrels they used. So only about a quarter was left. So three quarters of everything was gone, and they used what was left, those from those 157 barrels to fill up these bottles. Amazing how much can dissipate, can evaporate, can get, and can go. Um, when I'm in, I'm sorry, when I'm in Ireland, I've never been to the Scottish distilleries, I've been in Scotland, but I've never, that was before I found my love for, um, whiskey and bourbon. Um, when I'm in Ireland, of course, the big problem they have there is that the, um, the alcohol evaporates because of the weather conditions. When I was in Kentucky and I did the bourbon trail, they said, no, no, we lose water. We don't use alcohol. Of course, it goes up when we have them high up in the, in the, in the rick houses. 
which is also what here happened here, from 62.5% all the way up to 64.1%. And we're going to see in the next, um, G G George T. Stag from the next video is actually above 70%. This is, this is a hazardous material. Amazing. So I've talked all this time to give this a little bit of time to rest in my glass, to develop the biggest thing, the best thing you can do here for a um, George T. Stagg is to give it time. Don't rush into this, just give it time. Um, whiskey bitch Amy um, once said, and I love this quote that she actually has here, um, she says, we have to tame the beast. I like that, but then in my, in my next one, which I really love, she said, be careful here. If Satan had a whiskey, it would be George T. Stagg. And she says it with such conviction. I'm not sure about that one, but um, this is really, really good stuff. Let's say that. Oh, I get a caramel cotton candy with chestnuts and pecan pie. I have both here. They're the same. Oh. What I get, and this is really, really unique. I've never had this in this amount of clarity. I get a Thanksgiving dinner. I get my pecan pie, maybe even a little pumpkin pie. I get corn, cream corn. I get glazed. Not just the carrots part, but the glaze, like glazed yams. And what's really, 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 I don't know, I can't really put this in words. I get the skin of the turkey. All that butter's been on, on that, it's been crispy, and I'm not, I don't like the skin of the turkey, but yet, you know how that tastes. It's a little bit oily, and it's a little bit crispy, and it's a little bit with a lot of butter on there. That's what I get. Yes, a unique flavor. And then I go into the hazelnuts and maybe even a little bit of the peanuts. It's very nutty. It's very, very good. Oh, I like this. The last two videos I've had the George T. Stag. They're a little bit different. And what I'm going to do is, after I test um, the 2011 as well as the 2009 George T. Stag, I'm going to do a blind tasting with all five of them. And I'm just going to put them in the glasses, try them, barrel proof, put a little bit of water in there, try it again. And one last time, I'm going to put even more water and try it one last time. And then I'm going to rank them, decide which one's the winner. <sighs> Will Stag Jr. beat... George T. Stagg, of course not, you say. You, you don't know the taste buds of Whiskey Jason. Sometimes I'm a little bit weird. And often, at least in the German videos I've done, I've had some very, very surprising results with blind tastings. I can only recommend to taste things blind. Just as we've seen with Scotch Test Dummies when they did their um, 16 bourbon shootout. How could Maker's Mark win, Scott? I know it's good, but it's not that good. And of course, Bard had to pick the Elijah Craig, which I understand, and I can, I can go. Yeah, I can see that. But Maker's Mark. <laughs> oh, whoever wouldn't have? I would never have guessed that. Ah, oh, very, very good. Let's try it. Sixty-four point one percent. Oh, by the way, my control bourbon was Booker's with um sixty-three point eight five percent. So I'm almost in the neighborhood here. That had less oak. That's mm, pulling my mouth together here. Um, this is fifteen years and eleven months. This here was eight years and one month. Mm. This was the two thousand sixteen O one E. Um, batch, E probably for Europe, and um, yeah, astringency, a mm. little bit too much oak for my personal preference, 
All right, let's do what we do. Let's add some water. So. Fir, I was an F-I-R, um, like a fir tree. Um, woo, that was nasty. <laughs> I was not expecting that. That was so astringent. It was so tart. It was as, it was like a, I think um, Ralphie uses this a lot. Take some old English tea and let the tea bag sit in there for like eight hours. And that's what I kind of got. Nope. Really not a good thing to do. <laughs> At least with George T. Stag. It needs the air, I think. Ooh, I get a lot more pine now. The water has maybe tamed it down a little bit. It still smells a little hot. The sweetness is still not really, really there. Any more is gonna really, really going to water it down, dilute it. It's not that. That's it. That was my 48, 49 percent here, and it cannot handle much more than that. Very woody. In my German video, I taste tested the um, George T. Stag 2013 versus the um, Eagle Rare 17, and the Eagle Rare 17 was was oak and walnut together and this was just oak i did prefer the eagle rare 17 sorry um yeah i'm still getting that that pine that fir tree hmm all right going back here to the abv 64.1% Burnt caramel, burnt butterscotch. Not really my friend. It's a bee. It's a solid bee. <laughs> 700 euros for a solid B. It really, really, really doesn't need the water. 64.1% is kind of tolerable. It's kind of feasible. It's like a Booker's. If you work your way up, it's okay. It's a B. Sorry. Oh, I like the Stag Jr. a little bit better. At least I like the Stag Junior than the George T. Stag, 2013 version. Now, in three videos from now, you're gonna see if I'm going to make a fool of myself in the blind tasting, and if this holds true or not. Maybe my individual notes are totally off, and in the tasting I'm gonna go, ooh, the Stag Junior is just crap, and this stuff is the, the king of the woods, who knows. Um, price, value for price, is it worth it? No. I'm sorry. If you do buy the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, save it. Do not open it. And if you do open it, take 10 CL and give everyone else that you can trade with. I know in the States it's not allowed to sell alcohol in any manner. But then trade with someone a um, 10 CL or something else and do that instead. Um, over here in Europe we can actually sell whiskey. And I bought this nice little sample here for, like I said, 20 euros. Um, it was worth it. I, I wanted to try it. I really did. I'm very, very thankful for this. But I'd rather have the George T. Stag. I'm sorry, the Stag Jr. Mm. Okay, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of American and Germany. Losing more and more credibility the more and more exotic and rare whiskeys I taste. Because sometimes I'm not in, of the same opinion as some experts out there. Alright, so see you in a few days. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are the days of the release of my videos. All the best. Bye-bye.